I just noticed for the first time that Lyrio is flying away in the background. Hold on. There he goes. <laughs> there goes Lyrio. Perfect. Lyrio, he just never fails to make me laugh in some way. I don't know what it is about him. Oh, because Gon is- Oh, it's connected! Gon is going through him. I get it. Hunter x Hunter, episode 40. Yeah, one mistake I made. Kurpika is the last of his tribe, so that does change my assessment. Yeah, and you can do what I want you to do after I try to kill you. For some reason. But first, you must pass this pre-test test. Ned X users X unite, as is it's always the case for this show. Alright, <laughs> let's get it over with. Let's do this. If we're gonna do it, may as well do it. I, I feel like there's a distinct possibility Kurapika emerges like leading this gang. Is this the Nen X users X uniting? Dowsing chain and something finger. Really going all in on that chain thing. And gun! Oh, nice. Is this not like a squad forming? Okay, squad minus one. Wow, that's amazing. We must have skipped a lot of that Nen training. Whoa! Whoa, he's leveled up. Forget the squad, it's just Kurapika. That was so cool. Are they even trying? Those two are just swinging at nothing. That's why they're so weak. It's, it's a, uh, uh, I got this. Emitter. Manipulator? Emitter. I could tell when the two NPCs were stuck in their battle animations. Emitting can create CPU enemies. I wonder if there'll be a twist at some point where like a long, long introduced or known character turns out just to be a Nen projection. It just appeared out of nowhere, yeah. Right, right. Their wall detection was off. Not well programmed. Oh. Kurapika really studied. One person's dead. Okay. What are we looking at? That's it, I mean, it's the plant. <laughs> I falsely assumed that when everyone reunited, Gon would be Gon and Clue would be way ahead of everyone. Seems like I was wrong. They're just going to be way ahead of Leorio. <laughs> yeah, I didn't need Ned to like read the psychology. <laughs> What's his name? Bro, don't we have a mission? <laughs> like, what is this? Can we get on with it? Don't we have, like, cursed items to procure for the boss? Like, what would it even matter if they are plants? The plants are aligned with the boss. If the boss wants something. The plants are gonna help. They're not gonna, like, kill you. Well, this is Hunter x Hunter, <laughs> where like tests are the highest goal that trump any other goal. Catching someone in a lie is always annoying, but like it's extra annoying when you've caught someone in a lie and they just double down on the lie. It's like when someone tries to prank you and you figure it out and you're like, is this a prank? And they say no, and then they prank you anyway. At that point, you're just breaking something sacred, but I'll apologize if he's not actually the plant. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. That's rich coming from Kurapika too. I don't feel as bad anymore, at least. That is the justification I needed to get Kurapika's sex wrong this whole series. N yes. Right. Without Nen. Or with Nen. Oh yeah, he's the haiku guy. Interesting. 
Sokka would be proud. All plants will burn in flames. Again, the psychological signs. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a plant. Plant. All right, we got to it. I feel like the haiku thing could solve almost any problem. I see, but we're going through each person's skill one by one. I wouldn't want to have this power, honestly. Or like, it wouldn't be my first choice. Because, cool, but then you gotta like, kiss everyone. <laughs> it's also in its way, it's kind of, it's one of those lesser skills that ends up being really overpowered. Assuming she can get a kiss in. Like that character in Dragon Ball that can turn everyone into carrots. The unsung god of that show. <laughs> Is that part of the quirk? <laughs> Oh yeah! Wow, my whole opinion of this dude just changed, remembering he's he's the dog one. Oh, alright, I like him now. And it wouldn't be satisfying if that was your quirk. Yeah, she's the only one we didn't really see a full demonstration of. あなたの名前教えてくれることある。まだ仲間になると決まったわけじゃない。まあそうだな。役者を出るという第一関門は突破したが、本番はこれからだ。Oh my god, you could design a Hunter, Hunter, Hunter x Hunter drinking game around anytime they say the real test has begun. Not that it's at all out of place for Kurapika to be wary of this group of henchmen, but I respect it more knowing what Kurapika is like when you have his loyalty. There's something about the combination of being a really great friend plus being selective about who your friends are that is really powerful. A friend to everyone is a friend to no one, etc. <laughs> The employer could conceivably just skip all this if he made payment dependent on success. Then it would just hash itself out. Unless there's an ulterior motive. Okay. No idea. Not to say this is the whole thing going on, there's a lot going on for Kurapika right now, but I feel like whatever issues are happening right now, it's exacerbated by the solitude. I've so clearly observed in myself and other people, there's like a almost inescapable drift from the healthy middle when you're outside of the group that has kind of made you what you are or is where a lot of your goodness or values come from. Like I wouldn't want to believe that's the case necessarily for myself. I want to believe like I'm my own self-generating -gener source of my own strength and goodness and outlook. But the people that are important to me really in a way are like a touchstone. I have to connect every now and then for that recharge. And it's subtle too, because it's such a gradual drift. You don't really even necessarily notice it until it's at an extreme and you touch base again. And what a lot of people do, unfortunately, is if they get too far out, they start to feel fear about that coming home thing, that recharge. There's an embarrassment there. Weirdly, sometimes things are more clear when you see it through a different perspective. It's like just watching something with someone makes you see the thing you're watching, perhaps more objectively, not sure that's the right word, but at least different differently. Without even being able to articulate it sometimes, I can feel that going back to people I haven't seen for a while is going to expose the drift that I've experienced for the negative. Thankfully, I think the reality is often if you just overcome that instinct, it's all washed away in the goodness that is that sort of base. But I've also seen people kind of get lost and it's hard to like get them back. Kurpika to me feels like he's in real existential danger beyond just the immediate obvious element of the situation and the revenge plot. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of room between not forgiving and annihilating. And Miluki. Got something on your face. Oh, 
At least he's honoring his part of the bargain. Protect the waifus at all costs. Yeah, here we go. Finally. Me too. Feels like six months. Six months ago, I thought this was going to be like a two episode absence for, for Kirby Galeario. Boy, was I wrong. I love this theme. Could we not have just texted? This is way cooler, I guess. More dramatic. Meanwhile, Kurupi could descend into hell. A very brooding Kurapika. And Lirio is still Lirio. <laughs> I hope. I don't want it to change. Gone. Kilua. Hunter Cyclopedia. Oh, okay. So that's what we saw. Is it just me or is Kurapika hellbent on revenge? I'm worried about Kurapika. Not even that the revenge itself is so terrible. The Phantom Troop does not seem great. They probably should be stopped. There's a way it goes right, you know? He comes out of this with new new friends, as a, maybe even a gang leader, but like a good gang. The crew member is getting a lot of coverage in this episode. Seems like they're gonna be around. It's the getting lost in it. The thinking that that will be the answer or that that will somehow make the pain less. Zooming out, I think maybe a measure of something. It's not so much the act itself or the goal itself, but maybe more like the degree to which you're actually in control. It's a very tough lesson and it gets harder and harder to justify this idea the farther out you go and it probably even sounds callous but if there's a negative emotional fixation no matter how obvious it may seem and even how true it is that it's due to an offending party there's something critical about it for the individual feeling that way and by the nature of freedom i think often the path to growth is revolving that lens internally i mean there's just so many terrible things about other people and there are really great atrocities that is true but one's actions thoughts emotions are one's own and i think the two can be looked at separately like there's the course of action all right righting wrong ending injustice fighting evil but also being free of it in a very key spiritual sense this is sort of just theoretical or conceptual for me, but I think there's a way to fight evil cleanly and purely. Critically, it's not like everything's fine, nothing is wrong, I don't need to do anything, but at the same time, a strong emotional reaction to something, involuntary, obsessive, that dark rumination, the compulsion, not being able to consciously, deliberately decide one's actions, I think points to something that hasn't fully been grasped or reconciled or fully understood by the individual. And that's tough. I mean, that's so tough to really live because like everything you hate, everything that riles you up contains seeds of your own evil, even though like the compulsion, the desire is is for it to be just the evil for your emotion and your anger, whatever it may be to feel good and righteous. But there's something missing in that for me. On a very micro level, I feel like I'm always contending with this because I'll, I'll just see a behavior that I really hate. And to me, it's so clearly terrible and frustrating or, or whatever the case may be. I have like a visceral emotional reaction to it and I'll get really heated. And then I'm like forced to ask myself what it points to about me where, where my identity, my ego, my sense of self-worth is tied up in that so that it's a personal threat as opposed to like a more zoomed out, objective, recognizable wrong that I can take like deliberate, conscious, clearly thinking steps to combat, if that makes sense. So it's not the battling the phantom troop. It's not the fighting of evil. It's not even like necessarily the revenge. It's like the obsession that Kurapika has that feels both like a physical danger and an emotional, spiritual danger, especially considering him and Gon together or both for different reasons in different ways, absolutely obsessive people, very little regard for their lives. <laughs> <laughs> 